Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back with our special guest, Claire Lopez. Uh, she is the esteemed scholar at the Center for Security Policy. In our last episode, she told us some really, well, unsettling news that a Hamas-affiliated Muslim Brotherhood-affiliated organization called CARE, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, is now an appointee of the Trump administration to help train our Customs and Border Patrol security officers. Claire, welcome back. Let's continue. Thank you, Barry. Lots to cover here. Oh, boy. I, I told you on the break, I'm very concerned about this, as uh, I'm sure you are and our viewers will be as well. You know, when we think about the southern border, 99% of the publicity has to do with, well, there are Latin American migrants, there's human trafficking, uh, there might be some MS-13 gangsters. Uh, there's families wanting a better way of life. Nobody talks about jihadis coming in through the southern border, when in reality, with thousands and thousands coming, it's not that hard to put in a half a dozen here or there. Would you agree? I would agree, but I would also suggest that they're already here. They already live among us. Um, there are many, many groups that are offshoots of the Muslim Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood front groups that have been established in this country um, since the very first one, which was the Muslim Student Association back in 1964. I mean, literally hundreds. They're already here. And they're already inside of each of what I call the pillars of support of society meaning not just government and national security, but academia, our courts, uh, faith communities, local law enforcement, the workplace, society, et cetera. And don't forget the United States Congress. And the United States Congress. So what, what's the idea? What's the rationale? Who in their right mind would put these people in in the position of authority to train our border security personnel? Well, I don't know who in particular um, made that decision, but- What's the thought behind it? Well, perhaps there isn't any, I, 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 I don't know. But what happened is this, um, and we know this by the way, what I'm going to tell you um, is, is directly from the CARE Chicago website. That's, that's where I saw it. Um, and around the middle of October 2019, so that's uh, just a few weeks ago, um, a uh, piece appeared at the CARE National uh, online website uh, with some very nice photographs. And um, it featured uh, one uh, CARE representative uh, who is uh, Sufyan Sohel, and uh, he's the deputy director for CARE Chicago. And uh, he's in these very nice photographs at the website, uh, facility, facilitating a discussion and a training session uh, in the Chicago area for US Customs and Border Protection officers who work at O'Hare Airport. And uh, this uh, training program uh, took place under the auspices of the Customs and Border Protection, which is a unit of the Department of Homeland Security, a cabinet department in the Trump administration. So let's be clear what you just said. Customs and Border Protection is responsible for keeping out bad guys, including terror groups who want to come here and kill us. One of the groups that's been assigned by the federal government to train those personnel is a terror-linked organization. There's yeah. no doubt about it. And yeah. they are training our people to keep out the bad guys that the trainers are affiliated with. Did I say that correctly? Yes, unfortunately, yes you did. Oh boy. 
Yes, you did. Now, let me mention that in the wake of the Holy Land Foundation uh, Hamas terror funding trial that we talked about in the last segment that uh, concluded in 2008, in the wake of that, uh, the FBI actually did take um, a, uh, a decision at the top levels to cut all contacts with CARE. CARE had been training the FBI before that. Uh, they took that decision to cut those ties. Now, I don't know that any other department or agency of the U.S. government made such a public uh, decision uh, as the FBI did. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, DHS, for example, did not make that decision. But one would think that if the FBI thought it uh, prudent, advisable to cut ties with CARE, because of the outcome of the Hamas terror funding trial, Holy Land Foundation, that others would have followed suit. You would think so. There's, there's talk that, that these terror groups that are outside the country um, have made affiliations with Mexican drug cartels in order to penetrate into the country. The cartels want to bring in the drugs and the human trafficking and terrorists want to come here to wreak havoc. Is there any truth to that? Yes, that's absolutely so. And this is from uh, completely open source uh, reporting over the last numbers of years. Um, and there are certain Mexican uh, drug trafficking cartels like Los Zetas, the Sinaloa, the Gulf Cartel, their subsidiaries, which um, make a business out of trafficking not just people from Central America and, and uh, families and so forth, uh, you know, looking for a new economic uh, life in America, but no, also they make money by specializing even in the trafficking or the movement of, of certain uh, Islamic terror groups. Uh, like, let's say one element might bring over just Al-Qaeda. Another one brings just Al-Shabaab. Another one works with Hezbollah. Now Hezbollah, as we know, is, is closely associated with many of the uh, narco-trafficking cartels and uh, activities along the southern border. But that's, that is uh, what goes on, yes. Startling and terrifying at the same time, because we've all seen the videos of the thousands of people massing in front of the border, especially in places where the wall is not yet constructed or it's virtually permeable by a seven-year-old child, obviously a 25-year-old combat-hardened terrorist could get in quite easily. Yes, that is a, a very concerning possibility. And, and for all we know, we, I mean, we don't know uh, who's coming in and, and how and how many. But here's the other thing. As I said before, they're already here. And what is more dangerous to American national security long term? A jihadi, or, or even more than one jihadi, who gets across the border with intent to wreak mayhem, as you said, or settled communities in the United States that are part of a community of a Muslim Brotherhood jihadist mosque or Islamic center that flies under the radar in a way and really prefers there not be terrorist activity that would give it all away and, 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 and uh, you know, end, end the, uh, uh, the complacency that they're operating under at this point in time. We're talking about sedition and subversion not terrorism only. And that sometimes works a whole lot better at this stage of the game anyway, than outright violence. Well, your comment suggests an interesting question, which is, we talked about this in the last episode, that CARE, affiliated with known terrorists, is training our people to protect us from them at the highest levels in the United States government being approved. Uh, is this a deep state thing? Is this a, 
somebody's got a secret agenda thing? Are we just that stupid? Do you have a theory? Well, you know, I talked before um, about what we call the Great Purge and how generations now, since 9-11, of diplomatic, intelligence, military officials um, have come to rank, risen through the ranks in, in each agency, uh, deliberately deprived of the information they need to know about these seditious, subversive activities by Muslim Brotherhood and Muslim Brotherhood front groups like CARE. They Who, don't know. Who's behind it? The Muslim Brotherhood is behind it. No, no, it. I mean, no. Who's behind it on the good guy side? Who has caused this purge and has caused this blackout of who the bad guys are and how do we protect ourselves? The senior leadership of every single cabinet department that I mentioned before that's relevant. Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, Department of State, uh, the CIA, the FBI, the Pentagon. The leadership of each and every one of those is part of this, part of the purge, part of the deliberate erasure of certain words from the vocabulary, certainly from the training curricula, the leadership of all of them. They're all, they all took an oath, right? They all took an oath to uh, protect and defend uh, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, in order to do that, you have an affirmative obligation to know the enemy. And if you don't, you've abrogated your oath of office, all of them. Claire, really, really bad news. We're going to leave it there for this episode, but we're not done with the subject, I assure you. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Project. Here for ATP Report, a special thanks to Claire Lopez for the center, from the Center of Security Policy for joining us and explaining, well, the bad news, as it were. I want to remind our viewers to text the word TRUTH to 88202, 88202, so you can be signed up to get this and all of our stuff on your phone for free. We never charge, and you'll get it every day or so right onto your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.